This is the design that was approved by the county. To summarize, there's about 60 feet of 3 inch PVC pipe running from the cabin to a 750 gallon tank. The drain field consists of three 3 foot wide by 20 foot long runs of leaching chambers. I rented a 1.5 to 2 ton mini excavator from our local Home Depot. It came with an 18 inch wide bucket. The exca excavator plus trailer was too heavy to pull with our half ton truck, so I had it delivered. As renting it for two weeks cost about the same as for a month, I rented it for a month. First step was digging the trench for the pipe run from the sewer stub out to the septic tank. The space was tight, but the mini excavator was narrow enough to get into the five foot wide space between the deck and the garden bed. Digging the trench went quickly. Large limestone rocks that would have taken some effort to unearth by hand were dislodged easily by the excavator. The septic tank required a hole approximately 8 feet long by 6 feet wide by 5 foot deep. That excavation took the rest of the day. The most difficult part of the process was dealing with the spoils. My mobility was also limited by a couple of large trees. Once my spoils pile got to about six feet high, I would drive to the opposite side and move the pile further away. All right, so I'm in the hole for the septic tank. So we've dug down about five feet and sort of cleaned it all out now. And got rid of all the, the loose stuff and then tamped it down. Now I drove these stakes down. And those stakes are where I have to put the fill dirt up to. I need about four to six inches of sandy loam for a, for a bed for the tank to sit in. So there's this one over here. And it's the same height as this one over here.
like a lot. Hey, where's the camera, Gene? What's that? Where's the camera? Okay. See where the top of the, uh, The septic tank was bulky but not too heavy. Gene and I maneuvered it into the hole using several 2x4s as rails and a ram. Digging the first drain field trench was a little trickier as it needed to be level over the span of 25 feet. The bottom of the trench also had to be a minimum of 18 inches below ground level. Once I began chewing up the terrain, determining existing ground level was a little difficult. The other considerations was the trench needed to be 36 inches wide. The bucket was 18 inches, so I would dig out about a 4 foot long by 18 inch section of trench and then shift the excavator over to dig out the other half. In retrospect, it would have been much easier if I had run the slightly larger excavator with a 24 inch wide bucket and just installed 24 inch leaching chambers. The rotary laser level was invaluable for keeping the trenches level. By the second trench, I was getting pretty good feel for keeping the trench bottom elevation consistent. Dealing with the spoils continued to be a logistical issue. The first inspection required the full trench be open without the leaching chambers installed, so I couldn't backfill the first trench with the spoils from the second. I cleaned up the trenches with a shovel, test fit the leach chambers, and used the rotary laser level to set some grade stakes to confirm the trenches were level. I called County Development Services Wednesday, Wednesday morning requesting an inspection. They called back that afternoon and we set up an appointment for Friday morning. For the inspection, the tank had to be filled with water to demonstrate it was watertight. Unfortunately, it, I hadn't understand the tank install instructions requiring the center column of the tank be backfilled before filling the tank. Friday morning, I noticed the column had buckled. The inspector hadn't shown up by, shown up by noon, so I pumped out the tank and pounded the column back into shape, backfilling with sandy loam, and refilled the tank. Over the course of the next week, I left several messages with development services requesting an inspection. I finally got in contact with another inspector and set up an inspection for the following Monday. All right, so we just passed our first inspection. Checked to see if our trenches were level. We had a fluent filter in our tank, and then we had an adequate slope coming from the house to the tank. So now, I have to put my leaching chambers in and connect them, and hopefully get another inspection tomorrow. All right, so we passed our second inspection yesterday. So what they're looking for this time was to see that our pipe from the house is connected to the septic tank. Hurrah. And that our septic tank was connected to our drain fields. That our leaching chambers were installed and all clipped together. You can see the little clip right there. There was one, there was one that had popped out, so I just stepped on it. She passed it. Actually, I see another one popped out over there. Yeah. No, it's good. But anyways, 
Make sure these were all installed. And that we had our pipes. So the deal here is the slope drain field. All these trenches, while they're level, are all running downhill. So the idea is once this leach chamber fills up, it overflows and runs down that four inch pipe to this next leaching chamber. And if you see, once this one overflows, it goes down to that and goes to our third one. So yeah, I've got now, now I got the okay to, to start backfilling. Hurrah. Over the weekend, I backfilled the drain field and septic tank excavations. Initially, I was really concerned about driving over the backfilled drain field with the excavator. The leaching chamber specifications say that with at least 12 inches of soil covering them, they will support up to 16,000 pounds per axle. The mini excavator is about a quarter that weight. The treads also serve to better disperse the weight than a vehicle with wheels. The mini excavator went home Monday. The next week I ran a mini skits here to do some grading. I also had a total of 15 yards of topsoil delivered to give my cover of clover, wheatgrass, and wildflowers a good start. <laughs> 